back to another video from HSTV and in today's video as you can see by the video title I'm going to be telling you exactly how you can make the most effective summary notes to help you revise smarter not harder. So if you're new to the channel and you don't know who I am first of all go and subscribe. Second of all my name is Heen Shamaz. I'm a fifth year medical student here at the University of Edinburgh and I know as a medical student our time is very precious so how can we make the most of it when it comes to note taking? Now in an ideal world we would love to make notes for every single topic however we just don't have the time to do that therefore step one for making effective summary notes is to ask yourself what is the aim of making this note what is the point behind this am i going to come back to revise from this note and is this worth my time and if the answer to any of those questions is i'm not too sure or no then it's probably best that you leave that topic simply for active recall doing question banks or flashcards rather than spending that extra time making your own summary notes the chances are that information is probably already available on a textbook or on a lecture slide or on an uh, online resource. Therefore, how is your summary note going to be different to any of those other resources? And this brings me into step two, resources. Pick your resources wisely. For me, that means using my university lecture slides and actual lectures and tutorials because this gives me the actual content that's examinable for my university course. Also for the UK curriculum, things like PassMed and Zero to Finals, they're both really good online resources because they give high yield to the point content for pretty much every topic at medical school. Especially with PassMed, it offers a good online question bank, which is really useful for active recall and when it comes to making summary notes I will consult any of these resources to write these summary notes. Now as you will notice I've not mentioned any textbook mainly because I find textbooks very wordy I'm a very visual learner so I need to see things kind of laid out in a nice fashion and sometimes with textbooks it's just too many words for me to get my head around. I feel like I fall into the trap of just highlighting everything and it gets very overwhelming and it's very passive for me. Now if I do need to consult a textbook it will be Davidson's Principles and Practices of Medicine or for paediatrics I felt that the illustrated book of paediatrics, I think that's what it's called, is uh, really good because it's quite a specialised area of medicine. So as you can see, I know my resources on my fingertips. I don't have to think about where am I going to get that information from. I know the reliable resources that I need to go to. Step three, you need to decide what exactly you want this summary to look like at the end. Again, this has to link back to your aims. What is the goal of making this summary? And for me, it's going to look either one of three things, I guess. The first is a mind map. The second is a table and the third is going to be like a one page summary. Now I say one page summary but all of these are going to be one page summaries. For me I know I'm a visual learner, it's so important to know what kind of learner you are and I just know that by having things laid out on one page it's going to help me see the bigger picture and I'm going to be able to take one glance at this and I'll just know like 60% of the stuff automatically without even reading through it because I know I made it, I know where everything is and I just know that that as a visual learner is what's going to be most effective for me. So you just need to do a bit of trial and error and understand how do you learn and how best are you going to retain information. Okay, the next step is all about understanding what does high yield mean to you. This word high yield has become very trendy in recent years and everyone seems to be using it, high yield content. What does this mean to you though? For me, generally speaking, it's about cutting down on words and getting the exact to the point information that you need to learn. A lot of the time this will be orientated by exams, but not always. So for you, you need to understand what does this mean? And again, this has to link in with the aim of the summary that you are going to create because your summary has to be high yield, but it has to be high yield for you. And what's high yield for me might differ to what's high yield for you. Okay, now that you have all the basic steps for how you're going to make these effective study summaries, 
I'm going to show you some of my actual examples of real summaries that I have made just in the recent few weeks and I'll show you exactly what I mean and I'm going to talk you through my thought process so you can see some kind of real life examples to put all of this into practice so you can go away and do it yourself. This is a summary table that I made recently on congenital heart conditions so there is actually quite a few that we had to know about you can see here that there was eight in total and for each of them I needed to know like a brief description if it was cyanotic or acyanotic and um, their kind of etiology presentations the exact type of heart murmur I wanted to compare across all of them because there were so many and I was just getting confused between them all and then other specific clinical features to look out for from an exam point of view as well as management uh, types as well so you can see that having it all in one table just makes it very visual for me especially differentiating between acyanotic and cyanotic because that always confused me as well as the types of murmurs having it all laid out here it just helps me to remember it more in a visual way but also helps me to compare the conditions turn by turn which again helps me to retain it better. And here you can see another example of a table I made on anemia. So again, there's different types of causes for anemia and every single one of them, it kind of has its own thing going on. So I found it difficult to, you know, locate uh, the information for each of the types of anemia on like PassMed or a textbook. So I decided to incorporate it all into one table so I can see exactly what types they are, what causes them, the presentations I should expect, as well as the diagnostic investigations and the management. So you can see again here, it's very nice and visual, helps me to compare each of the different types of anemia and that helps my understanding from more of a conceptual point of view. But all of my summaries don't have to be typed, so some of these, such as this one on the menstrual cycle, I did quite recently, is actually all handwritten on my Samsung tablet using Samsung Notes. I've exported it as a PDF and then brought it into my computer. So yeah, sometimes I instinctively just turn to handwritten notes when it's just something that's really annoying, such as the menstrual cycle, which I've like forgotten and tried to remember like 50 times. So um, yeah, this one is quite nice as well. Uh, I always love having these kind of flowcharts, having everything kind of color coordinated. It really helps me, sets things right in my head. And um, yeah, I I think it's just another example of a summary that you could try and make on topics like this. And lastly, here is a slightly older summary because I've been making summary notes for throughout like medical school, but I just make them more frequently now. This one on chest pain I actually made back in year one or year two. So mind maps also work really well, as I mentioned. And again, you can see the themes kind of stay the same. So my note taking style hasn't changed too much. So the color coordination, the usage of arrows and uses of highlighting and also adding pictures into mind maps. It can be a really efficient way of summarizing and trying to gain a better understanding of a topic. So again, there is definitely a lot to cover with chest pain, but this one in particular, it covers some of the causes of different chest pains, but myocardial ischemia in particular, um, because that's probably what I was being examined on the most at the time. So I like that you have that personalizability, if that's a word, when you make these summary notes and you can collate information from all different types of resources and bring them into one sheet of paper where it makes sense for you. All right, everybody, well, that is gonna be the end of this video. I hope that you have found this useful and now you feel a little bit more confident to go away and make some of your own study summaries. Now, if you have any other tips and anything else that you'd like to say to the community that we have here, leave it down in the comments. I'm sure someone will appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye.